mechanical work, cutting, soldering for the 50th anniversary. Ford takes apart a 2014 Ford Mustang to bring it to an unusual place. At the top of the Empire State Building in New York City, the mechanics put the individual parts back together again and present the anniversary model of the legendary pony car. An elaborate birthday special which is linked to the cult. 50 years ago, Ford already did the same thing with the very first Mustang model. This unique marketing campaign marks the climax in 1964 Mustang year. Even before the presentation of the first production model in 1964, these advertising images ran on American TV screens. Mustang is coming April 17th. The unexpected, the new Ford Mustang at your Ford dealers. On 17 April 1964, the Ford Mustang at Flushing Meadows in New York, and the world is turned upside down. A car especially for young people, which has never happened before. And it's affordable. The first pony car cost just $2,368. In the USA, Mustang mania breaks out. Four million Americans storm the showrooms and the traders have to close the doors to prevent riots. On the first day, a sensational 22,000 orders come in, a world record. Ford can hardly keep up with the production. Women especially go for the Mustang in the first year. I was excited I had bought a new car, but when everybody was staring at me in the car, I was like, wow, what did I buy? I was really impressed <laughs> because like even the police cars was flag me over like this to just slow down so they could look at the car. Gail Wise buys the first Mustang two days before the official launch. I was 22 years old. It was Wednesday, April 15th, and I had just graduated from college and got my first teaching job, but I needed transportation to get there because I lived in Chicago at home. When we walked in the door, I told the salesman I wanted a convertible. He said, I have no convertibles on the floor, but come in the back room with me. I have something special to show you. And in the back room, under the tarp, was this baby blue convertible. I said, oh yes, I, I really wanted that one. So I bought it on the spot, but when I drove it out on the street, everybody was waving at me and flagging me to slow down and give me high fives. And I felt like a movie star and it was a really good feeling. And that's, that's how it was for quite a while. I was very popular. It wasn't me, it was the car. <laughs> Ford boss Lee Iacocca developed his Mustang plan. 1945, soldiers were returning back to their wives. 18 years later, in 1963, their children, the baby boomer generation, would have their licenses, and an attractive and inexpensive sports car was required. But the concept of the Mustang One, developed by the so-called Fairline Car Group, is a two-seat sports car. It remains a show car, as Matt Anderson from the Henry Ford Museum knows. Mustang One hit the drawing board in uh, May of 1962 formally. Ford wanted to project an image of performance in its racing. They needed a car right away to show that Ford is back. We're out on the track. We're all about performance. When the Mustang one debuted at uh, Watkins Glen in October 1962, it really stole the show out there. I, everybody walked away talking about the Mustang one, and it was on the cover of all the car magazines uh, in the next months to come through the rest of the year. So it really was a big hit for the company. The final Mustang is based on the midsize sedan Falcon. The concept offers Ford more variability. At the end of 1964, the Mustang is available in three versions, as a convertible, coupe, and as a dynamic fastback. In the end, every American should be able to buy his dream Mustang.
1966, Mustang goes into its third year, more chrome in the freestanding running horse logo. In Germany, the name Mustang is already trademarked, so the Mustang initially comes as T5 onto the market. The progenitor of the pony car delivers up to 190 horsepower in the beginning. V6 or V8 aggregates are available. In 1967, it is then called the all-new Mustang. It grows. Also under the hood, finally a big block with a 6.4-liter engine is available. For the power-hungry, there's also the 67 Shelby GT500, the king of the road. The spell of the Stang, as fans call it, is unbroken. I don't think it was a show-off car, not really. Like in the 70s, when the Mach 1 and the other big ones came out, which were also not so nice. Then it maybe got a bit of an aftertaste. A Mustang with aftertaste. The second generation came onto the market in summer of 73. The fans miss and scream for the typical pony car design. But the Ford Mustang II sold more than one million examples within five years. The era seems to have come to an end. In the next few years, the Mustang loses out more and more in class. Generation number three only looks like an ordinary sports coupe. For the 30th anniversary, the Mustang IV comes onto the market. Now again, the pony adorns the grill. After the design disaster of the previous model, in 2005, the Mustang V again appears, as you would expect from a Mustang. Now the Stang returns to a place where it made history. The sixth generation, once again, stands at the top of the Empire State Building, as once the original model. Ford Mustang, an American automotive icon, 